how to get to effortlessness, how to get to a state which is effortless. It's obvious that we cannot get there through effort, because a more effort cannot take you to effortlessness. There is another type of event that all of a sudden brings about a change effortlessly, and that, that originates from us. It's understanding. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like a hound dog on a scent <laughs> that's, that's looking for uh, the way to this sahaja. Well, <coughs> if I par paraphrase what he said, is that when there is no concentration, meaning no effort, meaning no goal. Right? Meaning going, not going anywhere. There's meaning no intention to change what is at that moment. Yeah. Meaning complete welcoming of what is going on at that moment. That's Sahaja. The question is not what Sahaja is, that's clear, because then he says all the senses are open, there is no choice, yeah. But there are two things. Number one, most people, even when they experience Sahaja fleetingly, they want something else. So they immediately decide that that's not enough. And they go back into the future, into the past, into fear and desire. The second thing is how to get there. You see, Sahaja means Sahaja Samadhi means Samadhi means state. Sahaja Samadhi means the natural state, the effortless state. So, how to get to effortlessness, how to get to a state which is effortless. It's obvious that we cannot get there through effort, because a more effort cannot take you to effortlessness. So how, what is in our experience that brings about a change effortlessly. What is it in our experience? What kind of event brings about a change effortlessly, but nevertheless seems to originate from us? I understand that if a cop stops you for speeding, it's an event that brings about a change. You, you're going to have to pay a fine, right? But then that's an external event which seems to be completely independent from you. So what kind of event that seems to, that is felt as originating from us brings about a change effortlessly? Can you think of something? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a repose, it's a relaxation, it's sort of a dropping back. That's, that's how I kind of experience it. If we let it happen, yes. But there is another type of event that all of a sudden brings about a change effortlessly and that, that originates from us. It's understanding. You see? We cannot understand through effort. Understanding happens, in fact, when we kind of relax the effort to understand. So, understanding comes from desire. We seek understanding, we have the desire for it, but it's a desire that 
has no direction be because we don't know the solution. Therefore, because we don't know, we cannot go into a predefined direction. So it's a desire in which the energy of the desire is no longer directed into a defined direction, because we don't know. So the energy of the desire goes back onto itself, so to speak, because it doesn't, is, it is not given a direction. And then effortlessly, understanding happens. As a result of this understanding, we are left in our natural condition, in other words. As a result of this specific understanding here, not an understanding about phenomena or what we have to do in life in a given situation, no. Understanding about what we are, consciousness, reality. When we understand that we have no reason to believe that we are separate, that's the understanding we are talking about here. For a short moment in the beginning, we are in our natural state. We just cannot stay in it because we forget the understanding. The understanding was telling us everything is just fine right now. And then the, uh, the old habit comes up, no, 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 it's not fine, I want this, I want that. It's not good, not good enough. I want to see God, I want to see the angels, I want to see the symphony of the angels, etc. And now we are cooked. Because then we start making effort to see the angels. Or whatever, right? Or having some bottle of champagne or bottle of whiskey. So, when we fall in love with truth as a result of the glimpse, immediately after a glimpse, we are left in our natural state. We have to know this. But then there is a residual habit to escape it. It's an effort. We cannot rest in the effortlessness. So we leave the natural state because it seems so natural to make an effort to do this, to do that, to think about other people. And then, because it seems so innocent to think about other people. But it's already ignorance. You see, it's very insidious how ignorance comes back to us. Because remember, as we see others, we see ourselves. So if we see other people, if we think, oh, okay, this person is very nice, that seems very innocent to say, this person is very nice. Of course, if we say, this person is a jerk, that seems... <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's very insidious how we... How bec because we have... Uh, that is taking a bite at the apple, you know, the, the original sin. You know, every time after, after a glimpse, we are in our natural state. In other words, we are back in the garden, naked, you know, happy, right? And then we say, oh, oh there is this apple here. 
right? And we take a bite at the apple, and then we are kicked out of the garden. In the beginning, we don't even realize because we enjoy the, the taste of the apple. So we are teleported out of the garden before we know it. And in fact, there are many apples on the trees. They are, they are different shapes, different colors, right? In other words, there are many ways to commit the original sin, the essential sin of ignorance. There are many ways, and they seem innocent. That's how we live our natural state. Sahaja is our natural state, meaning that we are there already. We don't live it really, we just pretend that we are living it. How can we live what that which we are? We cannot live consciousness. Mm -hmm. So the 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 trip out of the garden is not a real trip. It's a dream. Mm -hmm. It's a bad dream. It's a bad dream that seems like a good dream and then turns sour. Yeah. And you've used the expression readily available before, because um, it's not usual to be in that non-state of sahaja 100%. Some of the time you're just into the no, either we are knowingly in it or not. So it's, it's, we, we are not 70% in Sahaja. It's a yes or no situation. Right. And the way to test it is, at that moment, what do I truly believe to be? At that moment. If at that moment I believe to be a separate, a limited person, I'm out of the garden. If I don't know, I am in the garden. I don't have to know that I am not separate. I simply have to disown the belief that I am separate. That's very important because it's simple. It's very simple to reach a conclusion that I don't know that I am separate. And if I, in the moment, I don't know I am in the garden. But the next moment, I believe I know I want something else, etc., and I'm out of it. So it's these oscillations, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Over time, it stabilizes, but... Mm -hmm. in, in Maybe another time I can find the quote, but I think it was in here, and I think you've mentioned it. Is I think the way John Klein mentioned it is having like two directions of the head, one looking back and one looking forward. Yes, yes. Uh, but that's, that's uh, oh, I've mentioned that also. Yeah. And uh, there is a text by Plotinus in Greek, in which he says, some people, meaning those who had a glimpse, they have a double head. He said, duocephale or something like that. They have a face, a double face. They have a face through which they look at the world like everybody else. But they have a face behind through which they look at God, really, at the, at the one, at being. It's like uh, something has opened in us, an unknown direction towards this presence. But that's only in a sense, the beginning of the story, because yeah, Jean Klein says somewhere that in the beginning it seems like a inf 
that's, that's a very tiny, tiny dot in the back, you know, a tiny, tiny opening. But then there is a, a change, a, a transfer of reality, if you will, whereby the reality what, that, which was attributed to, to the objects flows back to this point and then, in turn, this point becomes the entire space. And so everything that appears floating in it is not as real as the space of awareness that, out, 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 that manifests it. Yes, yeah, that's the idea. So he was kind of describing uh, a process uh, that seems to happen over time. Is that pretty general? Pretty, like, for everybody? That's All of these uh, descriptions, you know, uh, the problem with those is that we try with the mind to understand what I am saying and asking the question, is it happening to me? Is that happened to me? We try to, with the mind, to, to, to reach a kind of a judgment whether it has happened to me or not. And this judgment by the mind is not important. Why do we want to judge that in the first place? Because that which matters is the understanding, which is not of the mind. To seek an understanding, because when we when we understand it, what it means that it is my experience, we say, "Oh yes, now I see what Jean meant." But perhaps I would have described it differently, and no description would be adequate. And so if I describe it from Francis' perspective, which I sometimes try to do, but it's not important for me to describe that, perhaps you hearing it, or each of you, we have a different representation of what I say, and none of these representations will be correct. And perhaps one of you, 10 years down the road, will say, oh, that's what Francis meant when he said that. Oh, I would have expressed differently. Right? Mm -hmm. And it is not something that starts happening when we realize that. You say, oh, no, no, oh, yes, it was going on for a long time already. It's just that we didn't match the words of Francis with the experience. And, and, and this matching of the words with the experience is not important in this case. What is important is because that, because that kind of describes a state. So any description of a state will be sufficient ade or adequate. The understanding that matters is the understanding that relates not to a state, but to the witness or to the reality, to, to the witness of the states or to the reality of the state. Whatever you understand that relates to consciousness or awareness, it's the same in me, in my case, to I, to reality, to being, that is, that is, that, that's the only thing which matters. The rest is the fluff. Okay, thank you.